for speaking so eloquently about what Bard Academy does. Um, so my name is Huri once again, and I wanted to talk to all of you as a parent of a recent Bard Academy graduate. So my daughter Jacqueline graduated in May, along with Kathy, I believe, to <laughs> right. Um, and now she is a she is a freshman and the college. And um, one of the things that attracted me about the school was that um, I love the idea of early college for my daughter because she had already um, taken many high school classes in middle school. So for us, it didn't make a lot of sense to then go into a four year high school once again and kind of repeat everything one more time. So when I realized that she could earn her degree um, in high school in two years and then earn also a college degree in two years after that, this was very appealing to me. And we came to the school, we met some of the teachers and the faculty and we were absolutely blown away. So um, I wanna tell you a little bit about the school itself, uh, give you some, a little bit of background information. Um, the school is in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, which is a very small town in the Berkshires. It's bucolic, it's beautiful. It's a very safe community, and uh, the, the school is in walking distance of the downtown and little shops that the students will frequently visit. Um, we have both day students and boarding students. The majority of the students live on campus, um, and some of the uh, families are local. Um, the student to teacher ratio is eight to one, and the class sizes are typically very small, um, about 11 students per class. We do have international languages that we teach at the Academy of uh, French, Spanish, Chinese, and linguistics. Um, my daughter took the linguistics class. It's kind of a class that teaches you all about how languages are based. Uh, so that's actually a really interesting class that's typically not taught in high school at all. Um, I do wanna briefly say that students who apply internationally, they do need to take an English proficiency exam and we can touch base on that a little bit more later in the call. And we do help students with their I-20 forms uh, once they apply to the school. We are testing optional. Um, students are welcome to take tests like the SSAT to get into the academy, but they are not required of families. Uh, we do have some sports on, on campus, volleyball, swimming, and I've heard rock climbing is fantastic. And let's see, there's also soccer and there's a lot of uh, clubs that students um, are participating in. I believe Kathy can speak more to that than I can. Uh, we have about 15% international students from all over the world. And um, we don't necessarily have age requirements, but I do understand that students that are below the age of 12 cannot live on campus. You have to be at least 12 years old to be living on campus. Um, the typical age, however, is 14 for academy, and later on for the college, it's 16. Um, we do have a wonderful student support system on campus for tutoring, um, for writing tutoring, for class tutoring, individual tutoring. We also have a student support system for, um, for development, for student success, success and a wellness program right on campus so that students have easy access to be able to speak to people when they need to. Um, and again, I'm happy to give more facts later on, but that's some just initial facts about the school before we continue with our conversation. And the, la and the next person I would like to introduce to you is our uh, assistant registrar, Peter Long. I wanted to tell you a little bit about Peter. So Peter is just fabulous. He is our assistant registrar. He's also a working artist and has taught art classes in the academy program. As an assistant registrar, he supports our students, helping them navigate their time in the academy, matriculation into the college program, and moderation into the BA program or transfer to a new institution. He works in conjunction with our students with Manat to facilitate leave to study away for juniors, and he helps seniors proofread and revise their senior thesis proposals. And before I, I introduce uh, Peter directly, 
all of our seniors in the college do have to write a thesis, so Peter does help with that. And without any further ado, I would love to introduce Peter to all of you. Take it away, Peter. Thanks. Um, so I'm here to today to talk about the, like the six-year arc, um, which we call from the academy through the BA program. Um, so one of the unique things about Bard Academy is that um, some of our, our students will stay from ninth grade through their BA on the same campus with uh, the same faculty, and they get to know the, the teachers that they'll have um, in their BA program um, starting in ninth grade and build those relationships early so that by the time they become a first year student in college, um, they're really accustomed to the campus and a lot of our academy students end up becoming um, student leaders. Um, I know personally, I worked with the um, student government last year and most of our student reps in our student government were academy grads. Um, I think there's a larger portion of them this year um, just because they're more accustomed to how things work and um, helping other students get around uh, by the time they get to their first year in college. Um, so one of the, uh, when the students are in the academy, they take a uh, kind of a wide breadth of, of classes. Um, so they'll take a, like a, a literature class, a world language class, um, social science, um, usually take two arts classes or music classes, um, and then math and science. Um, and one of the other things that's really unique about the academy program is that um, because we're on the campus of uh, a, co a four-year college, um, the academy students, uh, if they excel in a certain area, have access to uh, those college level classes um, from the first semester that they get on, on campus. Um, so if a student, for example, uh, comes into the academy with a really high math level, um, maybe their, their home uh, high school doesn't offer anything above the calculus level, they complete calculus maybe in eighth or ninth grade. Uh, we have all the way through the um, senior year of college level of math. So that's something that um, our academy students really take advantage of. Um, and also having the facilities of a, a four-year college available to, uh, um, to the high school students as well. So that includes like our, our, um, our science labs, our art studios, our theater, um, our music program, um, and our uh, all of the, the faculty, um, as John said, are uh, most of them have uh, terminal degrees in their field, which means they, they went to school until there was no more school to go to. Um, so they're really experts in their field, um, which is not something you usually see in a, in a high school program. Um, and one of the other unique things that um, Simon's Rock is able to offer, and I think um, Hori had alluded to it before, is the 3-2 the programs, um, which um, I help a little bit with. Uh, but basically the students, once they start in the college, they would do their first three years at Simon's Rock and then they would um, finish their next two years at a different institution. Our most popular one is Columbia University. Uh, the second most popular is Dartmouth. Um, and both, both of those are uh, pre-engineering programs. Um, and after five years, the student would get uh, their BA from Simon's Rock in liberal arts and their BS in pre-engineering from uh, either Columbia or Dartmouth. Um, and those are things that we can speak a little bit more about in the, the question and answer later on. Thank you so much, Peter. That was great. And Peter, you answer every question I've ever had about anything in the school. <laughs> You're just wonderful. Um, our next speaker is Manat Wooten, and she is the Director of Student Engagement and Career Development. Manat has worked in higher education for the past 15 years. Her career began with her role as a Director of Student Activities at Hollins University, a small private liberal arts women's college in Virginia. Then as the Assistant Director of Student Success and Engagement at Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, the state's only public liberal arts college. More recently, she has been the Director of Student Engagement and Career Development at Simons Rock for the past five years. In this capacity, she guides young scholars towards planning for post-undergraduate life by helping students connect their classroom experience and expertise with skill building for career success. And before I um, ask Manat to join our conversation, I want to say that I have personally seen the types of programs that Manat is engaging students with, and I've been very impressed with those programs. And with that, I would like to introduce Manat into the conversation. Thank you, Manat. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, 
Thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm going to talk a little about our Lead to Study Away program, um, just give a general overview, and then also drill down to some of our um, more popular Lead to Study Away um, locations and preferred partnerships. Um, so Lead to Study Away is very unique at Simon's Rock in that um, unlike um, most other colleges, uh, students can choose to study anywhere within the um, United States and also anywhere um, in, the, in, in the world that um, where they want to be geographically. The only stipulation that we have as an institution is that the student must find um, an academic program um, that is accredited. Um, that they can then transfer their credits back to us. Students' um, credits um, will transfer back a C or better. So it's really important that the program offers courses and or experiences that the student wish to take to build towards their graduation credits. Otherwise, um, it could be a very grand, great vacation, but we want our students to also um, be able to make the connections from what they've done um, as first years and sophomores. And so at that pivotal year in the junior uh, part of um, sort of the midway part of their BA program, to sort of then start linking those classroom experiences with a specialized program abroad or, or at a different university or college in the US or an internship experience. Um, Again, that's another unique advantage for Simon's Rock in that students can do a year long program or they can do two different semester long programs or they can even mix it up even further and do an internship and a study abroad program, um, one in the fall and one in the spring. We have um, our preferred providers, uh, preferred providers, that is, um, and that just means that we've built relationships with these um, study away vendors over time. Um, like I said, students can choose to go with any provider anywhere in the world, but um, there are some dozen or so that we have a, a relationship with and we recommend both for the unique, uniqueness of the program that they offer and as well as the fact that our students have done these programs um, time and time again and come back raving about them and then share them with their peers. So, and they also have just a unique sort of fit with the interests that our students have um, at Simon Brock. Um, our two most uh, popular programs are uh, the connections that we have um, with Oxford University. Um, Oxford University and, and Simon Rock has a um, partnership agreement whereby students can apply to study away at other Lincoln College or St. Catherine's College, the, the, those two colleges within the Oxford University system. Um, at St. Cat's, they can choose to do just a semester or term as they call it. Um, at Lincoln, they, they must study away for the entire year. So the schools have very different um, uh, program requirements, but they offer our students um, the same courses and uh, interest and provide um, the same close uh, connection with faculty as our students have at Simon Drop with a tutorial system that's in place at Oxford. Um, London School of Economics is also another very popular um, destination for our students. While we don't have a formal agreement with them, I can say that they must love our students because they snatch them up every semester when they apply. We have um, two there now that are studying. We had, um, I think, one every year that I have been working at Simon's Rock. And our students just rave um, about this program um, from the courses to the work with the faculty to the cohort that they um, meet with while they're there to the career development pieces, which is, of course, a, a special note in my heart when they come back and really you know, explain how much that they've grown or come to appreciate um, the ways in which LSE um, introduces them to the professional world. Um, so I'm, I've just been really impressed with how um, the growth and the uh, um, connectedness that they have with the program um, that's just been through the years by choice. 
Um, one of our students in particular went there for study away program and, and enjoyed it so much, um, applied to go there for graduate school and, and got accepted. So it's definitely a high watermark in, in our um, in our study away program. Um, and I, I just want to uh, finish with uh, some of the in-network programs that we have with um, Bard College, which um, allows us, because of our connection, to study at Bard Berlin. They have a campus in Berlin. They have campuses in, in other countries as well, but Bard Berlin is um, the most popular one. They have what's called um, the uh, lab, that's the uh, liberal arts abroad, sort of taking on um, the, the sort of um, structure of Bard's curriculum, the sort of core piece of it, and planting it on this very tight, close-knit campus in Berlin, where students then get um, to explore the city together. They take classes together. In addition, they have um, another sort of pathway at Bard Berlin with the arts. So there's an arts and society component there as well. Um, we have a, a great uh, program um, that is domestic based with um, Bard as well. It's called Bard Globalization International Affairs or BGIA. We're very big into acronyms within the network. Um, and so BGIA allows students to do an internship, have an internship experience, as well as take a class with someone in the industry. So while they have had these close relationships with faculty, um, BGIA allows a student to be matched per interest with an, uh, an internship in New York City. They reside at um, the 92nd Street Y all together. Um, they are given a thorough orientation of the city and, and how to navigate it. Once they are matched by their interest with um, some of the leading nonprofits and organizations and agencies in New York City. Um, they do their internship doing the, during the day and then have a short break and then go into a three hour class at night. And so it's a really full program. Um, they also attend lectures um, from anywhere from diplomats to um, leaders in um, economics, um, those that may be uh, uh, doing during research um, from fields as vast as um, law to medicine um, to the arts to education. So all of the, the thread to connect all of this is that it's seen through the lens of international affairs. And so the classes themselves, one might be taught in cybersecurity, one might be told, taught in global public health. They are taught by those um, vast long careers in those areas, not by faculty in academia, but those that have been long practitioners in those areas. So that's one of the unique advantages of BGIA is that the students get a different perspective of somebody who's actually worked in that field and teaching from its, the direct experience from that uh, profession. Um, I'm going to stop and for now and, and hope that there's some questions at the end about our experiences. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for a, a wonderful information that you've shared with everyone. Um, our, I also wanted to make sure that we all know that at the end, if people have questions um, for specifically for admissions, our admissions director is on this call, Michelle Chavez. And um, if she wants to pop in and say hello, um, Michelle, at the end, you'd like to answer maybe some questions and we can bring you back into the conversation. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I just want to say a few words about Michelle. Uh, the focus of Michelle's career to date has been in higher education, global recruitment and admissions and university program development. Over the course of the past 20 years, she has offered key contributions to this field through ongoing research, program enhancements, developmental leadership, and international recruitment and admissions. Thank you so much for being here, Michelle. Um, I do want to introduce our our student this evening, Kathy Zhang, and it's my pleasure to have you here, Kathy. She's an extraordinary young woman. Kathy is from Shanghai, China, and is a sophomore at Bard College at Simons Rock. Her interests include computer science, creative writing, and economics. She speaks both English and Chinese, 
Kathy is a research fellow and in internship at GB Lab Research. She also has a student research fellowship at Scaling University Re uh, Research Project. Her leadership positions include the International Students Club at Simons Rock, the STEM Rack Club, and she also serves as a student representative. And she's very humble. And with that, I would love to introduce Kathy to all of you. Take it away, Kathy. Thank you so much, Hori, for the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Kathy Zen. Um, I'm from Shanghai, China. I'm also in, an international student. Uh, um, and yeah, I just really, as a student, I really want to share a little bit about my experience at Simon's Rock. Um, I started in the academy as a ninth grader and came all the way through, and I now um, led ended as a college student so it's it's been a really great experience i just can't say like how i how lucky and grateful i feel that I find simon's rock and is able to am able to be part of the community um one thing i just found so amazing about simon's rock is that um, in fact like i was like really before can't come into simon's rock really a stereotypical STEM student, like I'm really interested in computer science. Well, I still am, but the really amazing part of the about Simon Strzok is that the professors here in the academy helped me found my love in poetry. And this is just something that I never would imagine um, being able to achieve and re have this realization, if not without, if not. Um, Without the help of um, all the all my professors, everyone here at Simon's Rock, so it's been a really amazing thing. And I I just feel like now I'm looking back, it's always those, you know, my professors encouraging me. And um, we did a poetry project um, when I was um, a first year as a ninth grader in our literature class, and that was my first time writing a poetry myself. Um, and uh, my my professor at that time, um, she she pulled pulled me over after class and said, "Oh, I love your diction here, and I love this phrase that you use in this line. Like, can you tell me a little bit more about those meanings?" And it's it's just like with all those encouragement, and um, she would introduce me to other faculties that are uh, specialized in this area. And then we started talking, having regular meetings together, and just going into this area together. And I, I just feel like I got so much support, and I I just and so much so many motivations that really helped me. Um, pursue my passion and my love in both of those areas. And speaking of that, I think another really amazing thing about Simon's Rock is how much flexibility that it offers to students. Is like, I can't really imagine how a student can um, pursue both computer science and poetry. That those two areas that don't seem like totally not not related things, but like how Simon's Rock really allow students to be able to do so. And I think it's really amazing that I actually um, was able to found like, you know, intersecting points. I was actually starting to do like a um, um, poetry visualization project with my comp sci professor. And <laughs> I think it's just like, there are just moments that you feel so much joy that you found, oh, wow those two are really like things that I'm really passionate about is like are able to be able to be mingled together and you found wow this is like so wonderful like this is such a wonderful experience and I just want to say that um, like um, Peter and then like John like Manette was saying it's also just um, that Simon Straub, that Bar Academy, our professors never never will limit us. So if you are really advanced or prepared in, for example, math classes, you're just like gonna go right away into college math classes. Like they're never they're always gonna encourage you to, you know, challenge yourself. And we have all those resources like from the college having been having the academy and the college on the same campus, we're able to meet all the college professors who are teaching both the academy the academy classes as well meet all those professors and are able to take advantage of all those resources and um and i just 
I just also want to say that um, it's not just the academics. I would also say it's a lot of this environment, like this like sort of like hum humanity environment that really influenced me a lot as well. Um, you, when you came here, you will feel like, oh, wow, like all my peers, they are just like so motivated. And Simon's Rock is really a special school that you will find yourself with such a group of peers who are just like you, who are really ready for challenges, who are, you know, because we are like a special college, because um, like in the academy, like we're early, early, like early high school, and then uh, people are really like sort of like really ready for challenges. Okay, I'm gonna do high school in two years. I'm gonna, I'm ready for going to college like in a really early age. And everyone is so motivated and so passionate about the areas that they're interested in. Even though like we may have like totally like different um, areas of interest, but we always just have sort of like feel this vibe of, of passion, of motivation together. And it's really amazing thing. And my professors as well, like you will, you will feel like from your heart that they really love the areas that they're teaching. And, and it's something that really, um, besides your own passion, it's really also something that helped motivate us. Like I, I believe like all my peers in their own in their like own path of pursuing their, like their different areas of interest. And, I think it's just really amazing. And as an international student, um, I would just say that I just can't <laughs> say like how grateful I am. But during the pandemic, um, I wasn't able to go back home. My family, all my family's uh, uh, members live in Shanghai, China. And I've been staying here like in Great Barrington as I'm as raw for the whole pandemic. It's been like more than one and a half years now. And everyone has been so nice. I've got so much support. Um, I just can't say how grateful I am, and it's really such a warm community that the moment that you you came here, like you are part of the community, you are part of the family, and you would get to know everyone, and you will say hi to everyone when uh, you when you're walking around campus, and yeah, you just got so many siblings and parents, and then like we are all living together, and then you get so much support, like even in the pandemic with so many challenges so yeah so this is like so really sorry i got a little bit excited because it's really something that i feel um truly and so grateful about simon's rock so um i will also happy to um talk uh, more about like the student experience um um as a student like as simon's rock as an international student especially as simon's rock as well if you have any questions uh thank you so thank you. much thank you kathy thank you so much for that i know that there are questions that people would like to ask and um, I have some of the questions in front of me. Uh, Xinhua, would you like me to say some of the questions out loud um, and have people from the panel answer them? Or would you like to speak for a few minutes first? Yeah, I just want to say that, Cassie, you have really great public speaking skills. Thank you. <laughs> to, um, uh, really, really, let me remove that. Give, give me, um, I, I put it on spotlight. So sorry. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 非常好的公共演讲能力, Cassie, 那, 那个我, 我觉得你展示了一个非常, 一个自信, 非常外向, 非常有沟通能力能力, 非常强的一个孩子, 我相信这也是非常多的, 呃, 我们的家长希望从我们的孩子身上看到的一个成长。那么我们同事已经把问题放在那个chat box Hurry, so it's your, the question you got the same as um, Zhao put in the chat box? Shall um, we just go through that? Yeah, let's go through them one at a time. Um, I have a few of the questions in front of me, but by all means, let's go ahead and just open up the conversation for families who are on the call. Okay, sure. Um, 大家需要, 大家那个, 如果说觉得需要我来翻译的, 能不能打一个一, 这样子, 这样子的话, so I'm going to let people type 
one in the chat box if they would like me to translate. Otherwise, we're all gonna just let you take over. Okay, um, I'm going to first maybe start with the questions that Jal uh, sent to me um, in advance of the call. Um, and the first question that was sent, and then we'll take a look at the chat box as well. Uh, how is your two-year high school approach from the parent of a sixth grader? Um, who would like to who would like to take that question about the two-year high school approach? Sure, I'll take that one. And I think it's important to keep in mind that the the larger theory of early college is that for strong students, the last two years of high school and the first two years of college largely repeat each other. And so if that's really the case, then you only need two years to do high school, right? Because because so it's a two-year high school program because we're expecting the students to then do early college for two years, which is actual college, right? But does you know I that does focus on doing this for younger students. And so it's it's two, it's two years of high school that are leading into early college. We do focus on the core areas. So English, history, math, science, language, arts, and other, you know, other elements. So you do get these, the, these core subject areas. Um, so there is that, but also um, as has come up, I think from in several of the, of the conversations, students are also often advanced in certain areas. And so they can move into other, other fields quickly. I mean, I will say having, I mean, my previous job, I was starting early college programs in China. So I have a lot of familiarity with the Chinese educational system. And many Chinese students, when they come to the United States are quite advanced in math. So the reality is the fact that we have the college level math classes, like you, you may be more advanced in math than you think you are because it is comparative. So that's where having those resources are, are, are really important. Um, so that, but again, we, we're getting the two years because it's leading into early college. I would think of that as a kind of a, a whole uh, continuum. Thank you, John, very much. I did wanna, on a personal note, say um, that my, my daughter was in that situation um, that we're talking about. So when she came to the school, she'd already passed her calculus in eighth grade. So that was one of the reasons we looked at the school for the opportunities for students to be able to take college classes as soon as they walked onto campus. Um, I'd like to go on to the second question, which I love this question. What are your concepts towards the development of an excellent student from the parent of a sixth grader? Who would like to take this question? Anybody want to take that question? I will take that question. <laughs> okay, I'll try. Um, you just had a sixth grader, right? Yes. I was, I I was also. I'm also hoping Kathy will take part of it because it yes. was the concept to develop what what concept she experienced. I want to know what it felt like from the student side too. So maybe I, the parent I, of the student perspective. I would love to just say a tiny bit about that myself, um, because I think an excellent student is a pretty broad topic because it depends on who you're asking when you say what is an excellent student. And I think in the, in the concept of Bard Academy, it's a student who's willing to ask a lot of questions. It's a student who's um, intellectually curious. It's a student who will read something and ask, well, what did the writer mean by that question? So rather than just being taught by the teacher and this is the answer, they may say, well, what else can we get, uh, gather from that information? Um, that's basically, from my perspective, one of the things about an, an excellent student and how that might fit into the Bard picture. And I actually would love to have Kathy answer a little bit from that question. Yeah, I feel like to me, it's really that I would say because like I feel like as a student, as a teenager, um, well, I'm a, already a college student now, but um, <laughs> two parents. So um, we all like um, like kids, we all have like our own ideas and then we have like um, sort of like our own judgments toward things. And I think that really Simon Straw, Bart Academy, really professors really respect um, our decisions and opinions. 
um, they allowed us to share between uh, our peers, share it, and then they really respect our decisions. I think that is really important because um, when you came into this environment and um, you really get this big space of freedom and then you started to realize that, oh, I'm, I am the person responsible for myself and I will start making decisions and like those right decisions like for myself and I, um, because of such freedom and such, such uh, space that you actually is sort of like quote unquote stimulated to have such like self motivation on both like academically pursuing your interests as well as you know uh, your like whole life wise student life wise as well. Um, and I think that is that is really important. And also on the other hand is that we have all those professors here always ready for you to support every student. So when you have such like an idea, you can always share with them. And if you need support, there's always want people that you can find that can help you. And I think that one thing that is so cool, so amazing about Simon's Rock is that like you can go to any professors, any staff or faculty, and even for help and then even though like they may not be the like the the best person to like to help you they would direct you or like uh help you community or find the uh the best person to to talk with and i think that um you really feel that all the faculty and staff members here like they all really truly want to help the students to you know to to thrive and so they they are always here for support to guide you if you need them um, but of course, it will also give you the space um, for students to to be able to sort of like have such freedom to make their own decisions. So I think really is such a I think really a really great um, I don't I don't know how to how to describe it. It's really such a great environment that is created for students that 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 you 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 feel really comfortable. Um, as a student, and you also gained um, sort of like um, unconsciously because you're sort of like like you 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 gain those self motivations that really drive you and make make you thrive as yourself. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, there's another question that was posted. Um, curriculum and academics of the school from the parent of a fourth grader and the second grader. So I think with what they're asking is, can you give some examples of the type of curriculum uh, that is uh, at Bard Academy? Who would like to answer that question? And I can I can speak to it a little bit. Um, so the curriculum for Bard Academy um, is really focused on kind of the breadth of um, like a liberal arts education of taking a little bit of like uh, word language, arts, math, science, um, and um, and history, and uh, kind of rather than focusing in on a small area, um, like the students do later in, when they're in the BA program and they declare their concentration, um, the academy is really uh, geared towards students trying out different things, um, learning kind of the breadth of everything that the school has to offer, um, so that later in their education they're able to. Um, like Kathy was saying, discover things that they weren't um, expecting that they really enjoyed or things that they really had a talent for. Um, so then when they get into the college, they have a little bit of a better idea of um, what they want to study more in depth. Um, after the two years in the academy, there's the two years for the um, the AA program, um, which is kind of, it's still kind of geared towards that breadth of study, um, but a little bit more in depth and really geared towards finding you know, those one or two things that you're really, really in interested in that you want to study in your BA program. Um, and then the, the junior and senior years in the college are geared towards that really in-depth study of the, that subject that you're really interested in, whether that's physics or literature or theater, or painting, photography, or uh, social justice, or any of those other um, uh, uh, concentrations that we offer at Simon's Rock. Um, but I do think that starting with that wide base um, and then zooming in on the um, the thing that you're you're really really interested in later on that you want to study more in depth uh, gives you more of like a, a um, an understanding of those concepts because you, it um, you're looking at 
different problems from different perspectives. The way that you solve something in a math class might not be the same way you would in a history class or a theater class or a painting class and kind of building those critical thinking skills and problem solving skills. Um, something that I think the academy students really excel at. Thank you, Peter. Um, there's another question that was asked of us. What are the most important skills and abilities that you look for in a successful applicant? Who would like to take that question? That would be me. Oh, okay. go ahead, John. I was gonna be very quick and just say, there are many ways to be the perfect fit for Bard Academy. So we can't describe one student because there's so many students who are exactly the right student. So that's my general piece, but I'll let Michelle do the more specific piece of that. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, from what you've heard today, right? Um, the school really provides students the opportunity to find themselves, find their interests, grow as uh, young adults. And so there really isn't a specific skill or ability that makes the perfect applicant. However, you know, one thing that is important for us is to ensure that the student is going to be able to be away from home, right? Because um, this is a time where they might have not expected to, at the age of 13 or 14, be away from their family. So feeling like they can handle that responsibility. Um, Something else that I like to ask students is, you know, how do you advocate for yourself? Um, at a young age, we want to make sure that they can speak up when they're feeling that um, they're not being heard or they have a concern so that we're able to address their um their particular situation. So really we do a very much holistic review of the application and the applicant. We have students from all different backgrounds and walks of lives and we really like to see what makes every student um, unique and that we know in that the support systems in place at Bard Academy at Simons Rock that they will be successful um, from your thrivers who who like Kathy and Jacqueline were exceeding to those who felt like they weren't challenged and their transcripts reflected that they weren't motivated in their high school or their middle school um, and that they would just need it to be in the right place. So there really isn't one perfect skill or ability. Uh, we really like to focus on developing those when they arrive. We just wanna really see the potential there. I don't know if any of my colleagues wanna add anything. I have a question. So Cassie, when you were applying for high schools at the time, um, so what what were you like what are the your considerations that made you to chose Bard Academy thinking about oh my god I have to finish high school in two year in a different language so I just want to get your perspective but thank you yeah absolutely um so for me Personally, I always have this dream of study abroad. So like, yes, I, I was looking for actually um, some other um, uh, high schools as well. Um, I was applying, I was actually also applying to those sort of like, I was a quote unquote traditional, like top tier high schools. <laughs> like, like, you know, like you may know, um, like St. Mark I saw on the list and then St. Andrew and then, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Philip Exter and those schools. So, but um, when I came to Simon's Rock, it's it's a like, it's a totally different experience. Um, it's definitely, you feel like it's not something that, um, cause I never have been into the US previously. Um, so coming to visit the schools was my first time uh, visiting U the US. So it was like Simon Sarki said, like a really rural area. It's like totally different from um, the other schools that I visit. But ah, the first time I came here, I just fall in love like with, with this place because you really it's a really it's just like a small campus. Like you see students walking around. Um, you see students walking around campus and um, 
they they say hi they come approach you and say hi like are you coming to visit our school and then and they will they will lead me to like to visit their classes like they will introduce them to to my uh, to introduce themselves to me and the professors would invite me even though i'm just like coming to visit like sitting in a class it will, they will also invite me to talk a little bit about like you know my my thoughts about like the readings or the, like the paintings that they're looking at so it's it's really amazing that you feel like oh wow like i really would be able to fit in the school um as an international student um um my uh my english wasn't like really good at that time so like i was also having like trouble communicating and there were also like you know all those like um cultural barriers um and um, they're just so understanding. And, and that was like a, my first sort of like first impression about Simon's Rock without really like even looking to all those academic resources, like academic um, like advantages. And then like, I just felt like the environment really fitted me. And um, so it's really sort of like, I would say the intuition in my mind that really led me to Simon's Rock. So, you know, a lot of Simon's Rock students, if you ask them, they will say it's not like we found Simon's Rock, it's Simon's Rock found us. And so it's really some, it's a, it's a, it's a amazing and amazing place. Yes. Thank you. So there was um, one more question I think I see here. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, admission and interview requirements, advice parent of a kindergarten student. Prepare early. Why not? <laughs> I did. That's right. Um, so I just wanted to follow up on something that Kathy said and in, in thinking about um, that she visited some of the more traditional boarding schools and came here and noticed that this might be more of a close knit community. And, you know, one of the things I always think about when we're looking at schools is um, the competitive nature of the students and whether or not they're going to thrive in an environment where they're constantly competing with one another rather than being in a supportive, engaging environment, right? So instead of thinking about being better than the next person, they're just being their best and knowing that their best is going to get them to the next level. and you know, I've never been in an environment with my 20 years where I've have uh, an opening in the office um, we, we, of admissions and I email the student reps and I say, hey, I have two hours on Monday that I need staffing. And one student says to me, I'm, I'm available to work, but if someone else wants to work, we can alternate the, t the days of the week and I can come in one Monday and they can come in the next Monday. That way we all can get professional experience. And you really, that I've never seen anywhere that even with work, they're always constantly thinking of supporting and engaging one another and not necessarily uh, competing, but more of leveraging one another and giving each other the opportunities, um, which I find to be very nice as a parent of an eighth grader myself, who's looking um, to join the, the college uh, in the future. Uh, I'm happy to see that this is the type of environment my, my student will be participating in. In terms of the admission requirement, um, like many boarding schools, we're also part of the Gateway and SAO application. We do prefer the SAO. Um, this year, we have a really exciting opportunity where we're offering students an early action application. Um, so students who apply by December 15 will receive an answer by January 5th. And it's non-binding, but it allows them the opportunity to know that they have a place where they can come and then begin to tour and uh, meet with faculty and meet with students and really figure out whether or not this is the right place for them without the pressure of rushing into meeting deposit deadlines. Um, we require that, and then we have a, our general deadline, which is um, uh, January uh, 15th, like a lot of the boarding schools, um, and we provide students the decision by uh, early March so that they can let us know by mid-April of their decision. 
Um, we have an interview process uh, so that we can speak to the student to see how they would feel being away from home, advocating for themselves, the type of experience that they're looking for. One of the things we didn't speak about is the fact that we match students with faculty advisors or staff advisors as well. So while they're here, they have a mentor that they're working with to help guide them both academically and personally through their time as they're growing and getting to know themselves as, as young adults. Um, we are test optional, so we do not require the SSAT. Uh, if a student would like to submit it, that's fantastic. Um, like Hori mentioned at the beginning, students whose first language is not English will be required to submit an English proficiency exam. We also evaluate along with the English proficiency during the interview process. Uh, we'll match that as well as, well, um, as well as the essay and the writing to see if the student will be able to handle the uh, the curriculum and have the supports required for them. Um, and so there's not a specific score because as you all know, we could you, you could have a bad day. You can uh, forget something and score will not reflect your real ability. So we really try to match all three, the exam, the interview, and the writing samples to give us a sense of if the student um, will thrive and if we have the support in place for them to succeed. Um, and then we uh, have academic recommendations. We usually like one from an English teacher and a math teacher or a science teacher and a math or English. Um, like I mentioned, two essays um, that we have that we prompt questions and some of the essays are the ones that are used in the SAO application. And then we look at the student's transcript uh, the last two years of middle school to see how they've done um, and if there's any effort or any support that we see that they will need when they get here. So for example, some students might have not done so well in math. So we'll note that to ensure that they do get the math support when they arrive on campus. Um, in their classes. And then like Corey mentioned, if students are international, we do issue the I-20 uh, form uh, so that students can schedule their visa appointments with their consulates back home. And then provide pre-orientation, pre-arrival um, orientation for students and families. Um, and John actually will host at times uh, admitted student uh, talks so that uh, we can speak to the parents and students about their student's arrival on campus during the summer. I don't know if there's anything anyone else wants to add. Can I add just the one thing? So if you, uh, you probably mentioned this before, I just want to re-emphasize that if you're accepted, I think this is a very big um, bonus. If you're accepted at the academy as a high schooler, you can just focus your high school years on what you're really passionate about. You don't need to worry about to do some projects just for the college application. So you can just do, oh, I'm re I really want to spend all my time on this project. I'm really interested in it. You can do that. I think that's a really big plus for them and their stress reliever. I agree, Xinhua. And I was actually in a webinar that said that the number one reason parents choose students to go to boarding schools is because they want to get them into a college. It's the transition to the college. And with us, you kind of get the best of both worlds because you get your student in a high school and you don't have to worry about the college planning and preparation. That anxiety, stress, and tension that the family and the students feel is gone because they know that after their sophomore year, if the student's academically done well and has good social standing, they'll transition directly into our college. Yeah, I think right now, like a college application has been very like, mm, the competition's really bad there and lots, there's lots of like stress over there, but I think it's good to put all your time on your passion. I would love to add just one more thing for parents. You're muted. Or are you muted? I wanted to add one more thing for myself, um, a, an observation I've made about our provost. Um, and what I wanted to say about John is that he holds, holds uh, weekly meetings every week with families 
all over the country, all over the world, um, to keep the students and families abreast of what's going on in the college. And to be honest, I've never seen anything like it. And I think that that is a really big plus for families who have their, have their students on campus and they always have that voice letting them know what's going on on a weekly basis. And I think, uh, I think that that's a, a, a wonderful aspect of the school as well. Thank, Thank you me. so much for today. I, I think like we're already mm, a little bit over time. So I, but know. I think we'll just take, take last questions. If we, we've already covered a lot and if you have any questions you would like to ask, we can take now. Anyone have, or you can also like share with us after this. We can connect you with the schools for any question you have. And also otherwise, um, give me one second. Well, uh, wish everybody good night. And also I please allow me to do to tell you what do we have in the next. So next we have Horseman, which is a K-12 school. It's a day school in New York City. And the Bronx has two campuses. It will be next Tuesday, 8 p.m. for Eastern Standard Time and 5 p.m. West Standard Time. If you are in Beijing time, it's 9 a.m. the next day. And we're going to have Jason Cadwell join us. Very excited. I hope to see you next, next week. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Hurry. Thank you, everyone. John, Cassie, everyone. Really wonderful information. Thank you so Thank much. You. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.